Yo guys, it's the JCraft channel. So I've had my Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus now for two years to the day. So I think now would be a good time to do a review on the printer again. This review, however, will show how the printer has actually held up through normal wear and tear, and what I've had to replace on it, and what has just worked. So let's get into it. So overall, I haven't had any major problems with the printer, and the Pinda bed leveling probe is unmatched by any other printer in this price range that I've seen. It's super accurate and fast, quickly measuring even a 7x7 mesh of points like how I have. The nozzle is relatively easy to change, although it would be nicer to have a system like that on the Mark IV. There are two times, however, when I tried to change the nozzle and accidentally hit the heater cartridge's wires with the tool, and it sparked. But even with this, the mainboard and power supply never sustained any noticeable damage. And this is when I tell you about the major mess up that was entirely my fault when it comes to this printer. You see, I was trying to print a doorstop with silk PLA filament. The problem, especially with this filament, is that it loves to curl back and stick to the nozzle. This only happens though if it's not being actually printed on a surface like the next layer of a print or on the print bed. The problem is that I was not monitoring the print for 6 hours, letting it to continue to fail. But I also didn't design the doorstop with enough surface area on the bed to stick to, which resulted in this, which completely destroyed all the plastic parts of the extruder, and there was a lot more than this than just this. You see, it's nice to be able to print new parts for your printer because they themselves are 3D printed. But if your printer is completely broken, you can't print parts to fix your printer in the first place. This forced me to go to Prusa's website and order the four main damaged parts for $3 a piece. Thankfully though, I ordered the kit initially when I got this printer, so I knew exactly how everything was assembled. So the lesson of this is to always make sure and check your printer or else you can have something like this ending up to you and you have to completely rebuild the extruder. Overall though, the motion components on this printer have surprised me as to how long they've held up. In fact, this printer has printed for over 56 complete days, extruding over 4800 meters of filament in its lifetime. I know that whenever the y-axis would move, it would always make these periodic clicking noises. This was actually coming from the y-axis idler bearing, and was making my printer fail more in the y-axis. You can even see this on the printer's memory itself too. The bearing increased friction so much on the y-axis that the printer would often think the y-axis crashed because of how much current the motor was taking. However, after changing the bearing on the y-axis, the printer has not had any more failed prints. Reporting this y-axis crash wasn't the only consequence of this friction, unfortunately. Although I don't have any models around here that show it, the first print of the day for me, when the bearing had the most friction, would almost always cause a layer shift near the bottom of the print. Of course, this was undesirable and caused some ugly prints, although they did successfully finish and the rest of the print was intact. However, I would still highly recommend this printer, even with the Mark IV out. It's $100 cheaper and still comes with most of the features, except of course the color screen and the non-VFA motors to make the prints cleaner. This thing has been a reliable workhorse for me, and the quality of the prints it has produced is surprising. There are parts of this third-party case that have been printed when I still had my Ender 3 V2. Even comparing these, you can see how the ender parts are cracking with terrible layer lines and how the Prusa parts are just solid and robust. Even this paper towel holder is a testament to how strong these parts are from this printer. There are minimal visible layer lines even when printing with 0.3mm layer height, which is completely different to how my ender was. So overall, this printer's longevity and quality have thoroughly impressed me. It's not super fast, although it is much faster than the Ender I had. You know, I would almost compare Prusa to Toyota in the fact of how much reliability their products have and how they know what works and they stick with it. In conclusion, considering the support and the record of print quality out of this printer and also Prusa's whole line in general, 
I would still highly recommend these printers, although their features and speed might be a little behind compared to other printers. So let me know what you think in the comments. Would you still be willing to get a Prusa like this? Or would you be willing to risk it and get a cheaper printer and maybe more features with it too? Please subscribe. <laughs> please, please. I need it. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. And as always, stay safe.